using this uh, final set of slides, I would like to explain some important aspects of validity collections. As you see here, this table indicates uh, validity of different measures that were used to assess work performance, to predict work performance. Uh, in the note of the table, you can see uh, brief information that uh, all validity coefficients uh, are corrected for specific bias that can uh, change conclusions, that could change the conclusions regarding uh, predictive validity of specific measures. Let's uh, take a look at some validity corrections that can be implemented within different uh, projects. First type of validity correction is correction for attenuation. Let's take a look at the formula first. Within this formula, the outcome is correlation of, uh, of a measure if we assume that both measures are perfectly reliable. In other words, this correction assumes that if specific uh, coefficients for both measures are perfectly reliable, so reliability coefficient for measure x and for measure y would be 1, then validity correlation between both measures would be as given, as calculated within this uh, formula. Here, what you also provide in order to calculate this perfect validity, this perfect correlation between two measures, is uh, you need to take into account obtain correlation between a predictor and a criterion, let's say personality and work performance, and then you need to take into account reliability of uh, first uh, variable of the predictor and reliability of criterion. Let's do a brief assignment. Assume that the predictive validity of test X was assessed by testing cognitive skills. The correlation between test X scores and cognitive test scores was uh, 0.24. What is the validity of text x if you correct this coefficient for attenuation? We are going to use the formula. And also, besides this value, we need to assume, uh, we need to take into account, of course, what's the uh, reliability. In both cases, let's say that it's 0 0.91. So, if we use this formula, this correlation would be uh, 0.274, so around 0.27. We can conclude, based on uh, previous slides that was uh, um, used to show us how to assess a value of a specific correlation, that it's probably a medium correlation because it's close to 0.3. So, in general, this formula indicates if we assume that both measures are perfectly reliable, that of course never happens, but we can assume that, then in the maximum, so the ideal validity correlation between test X and test Y is 0.274. What else? This table also from this article indicates an additional correction. Let's take a look at this another additional correction that can be made. This another correction is called correction for restriction of range. Let's take, uh, take into account the problem. Normally, so for instance in uh, school, we can calculate uh, relationship uh, between different variables that can predict students uh, performance. In this case it's a SAT test and relationship between SAT test and GPA. So um, a test and grades that students get. 
But in some cases, let's say if we take into account a smaller portion of this group, uh, only those who collected um, or who obtained maximum level of set scores, this relationship within these groups can be slightly different. So let's uh, cut the first part of the group and if we would calculate correlation between SAT scores and GPA in this top uh, SAT score uh, level group, then probably this relationship would be slightly different than in the uh, total sample. And this problem is uh, called uh, as a problem of range restriction. It means that in some cases, when not the whole group is available, then we can face uh, the problem of changed relationship between predictor and the criteria. That usually happens in the work context. Let's take a look at specifics. Let's consider selection of pilots. Our criterion is assessment after training. We use a predictor in order to uh, see what's the work performance in this whole group. And we found that relationship, overall relationship between uh, our predictor and assessment of the training. And the large uh, sample of participants, more than a thousand, was 0.64. So if you take into account how we evaluate effect sizes, so the magnitude of specific correlation, you would conclude that 0.64 it's a large effect size. It's similar for mechanical uh, abilities, coordination and reasoning abilities. So in the first case it's 0 0.44, 0 0.40 and 27. So maybe it's not as high as the overall score but still it's at least medium effect size. But uh, this is what typically happens during the selection process. We do not select the whole group of candidates. We only select a part of the candidates. In this case, we see that only 136 uh, candidates were selected for, for this job, for job uh, of a pilot. But if we would take into account only results in this small group, we would see different correlations. So overall, correlation between our predictors, mechanical abilities, coordination or reasoning abilities, we would find this relationship is only 0.18. So it's rather close to low effect size than to medium effect size, or of course, way lower than the uh, high validity. What does it mean? Does it mean that in some cases, when we select a smaller group out of the larger pool of candidates, we can find different correlations between our predictor and our criterion? If we take into account again this example, uh, we would see that for mechanical abilities, uh, relationship between this predictor and assessment of the training was pretty, really low. It was 0.03. For coordination, it was even negative. For reasoning abilities, it was rather small. That shows that some corrections for restriction of range may be necessary in order to adequately assess validity of specific measures. Let's take a look what we can do based on uh, available corrections. First of all, let's take into account this formula. As you see, we have multiple elements for this. Here, we take into account uh, validity in the whole group. We take into account validity in the selected group. Standard deviation of a predictor in the whole group and standard uh, deviation of the predictor in the selected group. What is really important to know that this correction can be only implemented if we have data for all groups.
Let's do an assignment. Let's assume that correlation between emotionality scale hexaco applied in personal selection and job performance, let's say in this case client satisfaction, tester of three months of hiring, and I stopped, uh, was uh, 0.27. There were 20 candidates that were selected for this job. Then we can ask a question, what was probably the validity of the emotionality scale in total sample of uh, candidates of 250. We can assume in this case that the standard deviation in the group of accepted candidates was 1, however in the total sample was of course higher. It was 2.0. Let's use a provided formula. Our input is like this, so uh, standard deviation for the whole group, standard deviation for uh, the selected group, and then the question is that what's uh, validity in the whole group if we assume given validity in the selected group 20 candidates. Based on this calculations, knowing this data, we can assume that probably validity in the whole group was 0.46. So, in the smaller sample, in the group of candidates, it was 0.25. But we need to assume that if we cut a piece of it from the data, which are in this case data from candidates that were selected, then probably in the whole group this validity can be higher. As you see here, based on the formula, predicted or estimated value is 0.46. So, way higher than the initial value. The initial value, 0.25, indicated rather medium effect size, rather medium correlation or average uh, validity, whereas new, the new calculated um, value, 0.46, is closer to high effect size, to high um, validity. As you see, this element is really important to adequately assess uh, validity of an instrument. Thank you for your attention.